I made myself a cup of red raspberry leaf tea, which if you're pregnant, I'm sure you've probably heard of this before. It is a tea they recommend that you drink in your third trimester, which is supposed to help with a lot of different things when it comes to labor and even postpartum. So I brewed myself my daily cup to enjoy. So I am 32 weeks pregnant, so I'm in my third trimester, kind of in that final home stretch, the last, I guess, eight weeks or so, depending on if baby comes early or later. Um, so we're kind of at the point in the pregnancy where we've either picked out or we've purchased almost everything that we need for baby but with that being said i wanted to sit down today and chat about some things that we've decided not to purchase for baby some baby items that are a lot of them are really actually popular things and things that a lot of people say are newborn essentials but things that i've just decided we probably don't need for baby. Keep in mind, I am a first time mom, so my opinion on some of these things could definitely change. I think as a first time mom though, it's really easy to get caught up in a lot of the advertising and just the whole baby industry as a whole. There are so many products that are targeted at moms and our parents as essential and are like must have things like you need this when in reality you don't <laughs> and as someone who likes to keep things a little bit more on the minimal simple side um that was a bit overwhelming for me at the start and there were things on this list that i thought oh yeah for sure i will get that and then the more i thought about it the more i was like but why and so none of these things on the list are bad to have and maybe some of them would be kind of beneficial but when there's so many things that you need to purchase for a baby it's kind of nice to be able to eliminate some things that are just not essential um, are not necessary and for different reasons whether that be to save money to save space things i've just thought about and thought realistically about our space and what we have room for and what we don't. And so this video is just based on personal opinion. You do whatever works best for you and for your family. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And definitely comment down below if you are a mama or you're expecting, what are some things that you do not plan on purchasing? Or if you disagree with me on some of these items, let me know, let's check down in the comments and without further ado let's get right into the list okay the first thing i debated whether or not i should add it to this list if it belongs on this list because it's not necessarily like one item but that is a nursery we are actually not putting together a whole separate nursery room for our baby and for a couple different reasons we do have a second bedroom but we are wanting to keep it as a guest bedroom at least for now so that if family or friends want to come and visit they can so we've decided to keep that second extra bedroom as a guest room the other reason why we decided not to set up a nursery before baby is born is because we do plan on moving or that we have the possibility of moving at some point while we still have a fairly young baby and so because of that we don't want to spend all this time and money setting up a nursery when there's a good chance that we will not be staying in this place and either way we want the baby to be with us in our room for the first couple of months the first few months of their life um, it's just a lot easier especially when you're nursing through the night your baby's right there and um, so we will be setting up kind of like a little mini nursery in our bedroom but we won't have like a whole separate nursery so that means that we won't be buying like a full-size crib we won't be buying like extra furniture and decor and so the reason why i wanted to include this on the list was because i think that there's like a lot of pressure like to have a nursery that you need a separate room for your baby 
or that it needs to be ready before baby is born. And while I think it is a really beautiful process of like preparing for a baby, um, I think that there is this pressure to have like this perfect separate nursery room for the baby when in reality for the first few months of their life, baby just wants to be close to mom. Yeah, so if you maybe don't have space for it or you're feeling overwhelmed with the nursery, like there's no reason why you have to have a separate nursery. The next couple things on the list all have to do with feeding and bottles and stuff like that. So the first thing is this grass drying mat for your bottles and for different baby things. You've probably seen it around. It's on like so many people's lists of things and so I thought right away oh yeah that's something like I need to get our kitchen is fairly small we don't have a ton of extra counter space and so it would just be something bulky and extra that I'd either have to store or keep on the counter but that would take up a lot of space and then the more I thought about it the more I'm like why can't I just use a regular drying rack or lay out a towel, put the bottles out to dry? I do understand that you're not supposed to like towel dry bottles and stuff like that because then they're not like sterilized anymore, but you don't need like this grass <laughs> drying thing. We already have a drying rack right next to our sink that's always there. And so we can use that for bottles, no problem. So the next thing is one of those things that I thought for sure I had to have, and that is a bottle warmer. But I realized that a glass of hot water, putting a bottle in a glass of hot water will literally do the same thing, will warm up your bottle. It's not only an extra expense, but it's also like, okay, now I need to find somewhere to store this bottle warmer, um, either keeping it out on the counter, which again takes up more space, or in our cupboards, which we don't have a ton of extra cupboard space. So we're just opting to not get a bottle warmer. Okay, the next thing is a bottle sterilizer. And these things are so bulky, first of all. Um, but the other thing is, is that if you want to sterilize, like truly sterilize a bottle, you can boil a pot of water and do it that way. Years ago, these would have been considered pretty essential depending on your water quality. But as far as I can tell from my research is that hot water and soap is enough to clean your bottles. And then every once in a while, if you want to give them a good like boil in some boiling water, you can do that, but as long as your water quality is good, just hot soapy water is enough to clean your bottles. The next item on my list is an expensive electric breast pump. Now, this might be um, something that changes, I don't really know, but for the time being, I am choosing to not purchase a an expensive breast pump. Some breast pumps, um, like the double electric ones can run you three, four, five hundred dollars plus. They can be very expensive. I know some places in like North America, they are covered by insurance, which is great. Um, here in Switzerland, it is not covered by insurance. And so I just want to wait and see. This is one of those things on this list that could change where maybe um, down the road if I find myself pumping a lot or needing to pump a lot, I will purchase one. But for now, I'm going to hold off because I've heard such a variety of different things from moms. Some saying that they hardly pumped at all. If you're pumping on demand, if you're not planning on being away from your baby for very long, or at least I want to just wait and see if it is something that's gonna be necessary before spending the three, $400 on one of these expensive breast pumps. Instead, what I have gotten is I have purchased the Philips Advent single electric pump, which was just under $100. Um, so it's still electric, but it's just a single one. Um, and it's super portable, really small. And I also have the Hakka, which can be used to manually express breast milk, or you can just put it on like the side that you're not nursing on and it will catch like extra letdown. So those are two things that I decided to get instead. So I think it's worth it to like 
wait and see um, before investing in a really expensive breast pump. Next thing on the list is the Owlet. If you've never heard of what the Owlet is, it is like a little sock that you can put on your baby that pretty much keeps track of all of baby's vitals. Now, I don't know everything that it does, but it will alert you like if your baby stops breathing or anything like that um, and kind of just keeps track of like vitals and I think maybe also like sleep patterns. I think it does quite a bit of things. I hope it does because it costs, I don't know, I'll put the price right here. It's like a couple hundred dollars or maybe even more for this little sock that goes on your baby. That to me, it's just crazy. Like it's a crazy amount of money to spend um, on something like that. And I understand that for some parents, it will be good. It'll bring like a peace of mind. For me, I think it would make me more anxious because I'd be always checking to see like, how's the baby breathing? What is it looking like? I don't know. I think it would actually cause me more anxiety. And from what I've heard is that it can be glitchy and you can get false alarms, like false alarms that your baby's not breathing. And that would just be terrifying. Um, if baby is going to be sleeping, they'll be sleeping close by and we will have a baby monitor. So I don't feel the need at all to spend a crazy amount on an outlet. They do also have like an outlet baby monitor system, which is also very expensive. And I've heard that it's not good. That's super glitchy and not worth the money. So the next thing that I will not be purchasing for baby is a baby swing, mostly for space reasons, honestly. Um, they just take up so much space and are really not convenient to store. And so instead, what we decided to get is a baby bouncer. Got the Maxi Cozy baby bouncer and it can fold up super flat so it can be stored really well. So for us, I felt like it was just one of those things that we can probably live without. Okay, the next thing is something that I see on almost every newborn essential list and that is a diaper genie um or i'm sure nowadays there's a lot of different brands of like diaper pails it's pretty much like a fancy garbage can for your diapers but i think the idea is that you can have it inside and still put like poopy diapers in and stuff and it won't smell or it's not supposed to so i've heard mixed things about whether it actually contains the smell or not so for us what we plan to do is that we are just going to have a small garbage can outside on our balcony and luckily we have a door leading out to our balcony here but we also have a door leading out to our balcony from our master bedroom so super easy access we're just going to have a some sort of sealed garbage can out there that will be pretty small so we'll take it out every you know every couple days take it to the big trash can. And yeah, I just think that makes sense. Like to, you know, if it's a poopy diaper to take it outside of your house and to not keep it inside your house. I don't know, the thought of a diaper genie is like kind of gross to me and then cleaning it out. Next item that we will not be purchasing is a wipe warmer. And this is one of those things that I find, I can understand a lot of the other things, but this is one thing that I really don't understand at all um and i have seen it on some people's like newborn like essentials list and like they swear by it they love having a wipe warmer but i just i don't get it i plan on probably changing the baby you know in the living room on the floor you know when we're out and about and so i'm not always going to have the luxury for my baby of having like warm wipes like they're gonna have to get used to having some cold wipes and honestly it's just one of those extra things that i think is like a luxury thing which again nothing wrong if you have it if you love it if you want to use it i just don't understand it the other thing too i haven't done like a ton of research on it about how like sanitary they are but in my opinion i don't know having something wet like wet wipes in a warm environment just seems like a breeding ground for bacteria maybe that's not true maybe they're totally safe but for me i just think that that's like i don't know seems like an area that bacteria and germs would like 
thrive in. Okay, the second last thing that I will not be purchasing are scratch mittens. When babies are born, their fingernails tend to be or can be very long and sharp. And so scratch mittens, like I totally understand the purpose, you know, so that your baby doesn't scratch their face it's just that's sad but most of the onesies that we've purchased so far have um like the fold over mittens so they're like already built in which is awesome the other thing that i've also seen some other mamas do is just put a pair of socks over their hands and that works just the same it works just as well if not better because they're a bit more tight fitted than the like normal scratch mittens so if worse comes to worse and we like need some like scratch mitten type things i'll probably just put a pair of socks on their hands i purchased from amazon an electric nail file and from what i've heard is that it's super easy to use even when they're really really young you know i think with the nail clippers you don't always want to use those on the little baby nails because they're so sensitive. But with the nail file that we got, it seems like very user friendly. And then that kind of eliminates the need for those scratch mittens anyways. And last but definitely not least is baby shoes. I just think that they are very not necessary. You know, they're tempting in the store. You know, you see the little pair of Vans or the little sneakers. They're so cute. But realistically, babies don't need shoes until, you know, they start walking. Um, we are having our baby in the summer, so there's no need like for shoes for the purpose of keeping the baby warm. Yeah, because of that, I just think baby shoes are one of those things that you could spend a lot of money on, but you're really not gonna utilize, maybe for like a cute picture or something like that. But yeah, just let the baby's feet free. Like put on a pair of socks if it's a bit chilly, but other than that, don't need shoes until like months down the road. So yeah, those are all of the things that we are not planning on purchasing for our baby again there's like nothing there's like no shame in owning any of these things for your baby but you know i just think in a society where they market so many different products towards new moms and new parents and they say you have to have this you must buy this i hope even this video if you are an expectant mom can just help you to like i don't know get the wheels going and and to really evaluate your baby registry and your list and to think okay what are things that are actually going to be useful or what are things that are just i just feel like i need to purchase because everyone has told me i need to purchase it yeah every baby is different every parent is different every lifestyle is different so that definitely does come into play i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next one bye guys